Okay, for today's business news, let's go to the World Economic Forum in Davos, where there'll be more talk over the digital tax spat between France and the United States. Our business editor Stephen Carl is live for us in the Swiss Alps. Stephen, uh, Presidents Emmanuel Macron and Donald Trump agreed a truce earlier in this week in the dispute over taxing tech giants. Their finance minister is expected to dig into the issue where you are today. That's right. Uh, Bruno Le Maire, the French finance minister, is going to meet his American counterpart, Stephen Mnuchin, uh, and as well the head of the OECD, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, the three men are going to meet this afternoon and they're going to be talking about the issue of digital taxation. France earlier this year, or last year I should say, imposed a tax of 3% uh, on major digital companies. Washington had found that tax to be unfair to American companies and had threatened tariffs in retaliation. Earlier this week, we had heard that Donald Trump and Emmanuel Macron discussed the issue and that they had decided that, that there would be a truce uh, in this dispute, which means that France wouldn't collect more payments from this tax. They have already collected some money uh, for revenues for this year, for 20, the first half of 2019, but they're not going to collect any more for the moment. They're also not going to refund the money that has been paid. And in exchange, the US wouldn't levy those tariffs uh, as discussions continue. So those discussions mainly being led by the finance ministers who are here in Davos uh, and their discussions likely to delve into the detail not only of the French issue but also a plan that the OECD has put on the table to overhaul the rules for taxing these companies all around the world. The US has expressed doubts over that plan and without the US it really can't succeed. So it'll be interesting to see what emerges from that meeting of Bruno Le Maire, Stephen Mnuchin and Angel Gurria here in Davos later today. Meanwhile, Stephen, conversations continuing over the state of the global economy in general. It's one of those themes that comes up all the time at Davos when you have so many CEOs and, business, and other business leaders uh, in one place. They're talking about how business is going for them. And we did start off the week with some uh, gloomy forecasts from the IMF, among others. A survey uh, by PwC of CEOs found that over half of them felt there could be a sharp economic slowdown uh, this year. Now, the indicators aren't terrible for the moment, but there is still concern out there over the state of the global economy. Uh, this is one of two issues I've been discussing with Andy Baldwin. He's the managing, a uh, global managing partner at EY, one of the big four accounting firms. I talked to him about business sentiment, but I also discussed uh, the Luanda Leaks scandal with him. This is the story around the fortune amassed by Africa's richest woman, Isabel dos Santos. EY, what, in Portugal, was an auditor of one of the companies in which she is a shareholder. So I asked Andy Baldwin about his company's involvement in that as well. But we started by discussing how businesses are feeling about the economy in 2020. Well, I think if you look back to 2019, I think there was a lot of concern over going into a recession or moving into a recession. That didn't happen. Uh, I, I think the uh, going into 2020, I think uh, many of our clients are cautious, but we're still seeing growth opportunities and we're still seeing investment coming through. Big issues for 2019 was trade. Do you feel after that agreement between the US and China, that's going to be less of a concern in 2020? No, I think, I think in reality on trade, I think what most people recognise is with the forthcoming US elections, we're going into a period of truce as opposed to uh, a deal. Most people would look at the China arrangement and say that's a holding, a holding arrangement, a holding deal. Uh, really, uh, people are looking for a more substantive deal, but we probably won't get that until after the, uh, the US, uh, US elections. Clearly, there's some sensitivity potentially around trade uh, between the EU and the US as well. So for you, 2020 may be a year of a holding pattern for many of those big issues. Well, I think what we're seeing is, you know, I think if you look at foreign direct investment, which is often a good barometer for the level of in, you know, intercontinental investment, uh, 2019 showed it as being down. We're not expecting a big significant pickup in foreign direct investment. I think we're probably likely to see a sort of a, you know, a continuation of the, tw of the 2019 trend, really until we get clarity on the US pres presidential position. Uh, one of your subsidiary firms, EY Portugal, was involved as an auditor in the Luanda Leaks uh, scandal. How it, is your firm's involvement uh, a failure on your part that you hadn't audited this company beforehand? No, you, you've got to recognise this is a fast-moving, fast-developing de uh, uh, situation. Like any organisation, we will look at our policies and procedures. In this particular case, we actually audited two entities 
that the individual was a shareholder in rather than an outright control. If you look at what happened in South Africa, which is obviously a very well-documented case around the Guptas, our policies and procedures, they were very clear. We didn't work for the Guptas. We didn't want to do any work for the Guptas. And actually, of the 550 companies controlled by the Guptas, uh, EY had not actually worked for any of those organizations over the last five or six years. So we'll take stock of the situation that's evolving in, uh, in Angola, take stock of what uh, we currently do around our procedures, and if we need to make any changes on client acceptance, uh, we will do. On a broader point around um, you know, anti-money laundering, we are working uh, with the European Commission on some of the new proposals uh, coming through on that. And we recognize as a public interest, we have a role to play around anti-money laundering and we will discharge and play our role fully uh, with the authorities and regulators as and when the case arises. That's Andy Baldwin from EY speaking to me about uh, the state of the global economy and the low Weeks leaks scandal. Coming up later today in Davos, we're going to be hearing from the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and also the Prime Minister of Spain, among many other speeches taking place at the World Economic Forum. Coverage all, the, all through the day on France 24. Indeed, all through the day and all through the week by our business editor, Stephen Carroll. Thanks a lot for that.